Welcome to Ignite Interviews. I'm Cindy Donahue, and I'm very excited to get a chance to speak with Rebecca Long, who is a senior manager of software engineering at NG Impact, and she's also the founder of Future Ada. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, so let's talk about your, I mean, you're a rare gem. You're like this rare find. You are a female, you're a woman in software engineering. Yeah, yes, uh, <laughs> there's not um, that many. <laughs> what, do you know what the percentage is? How many people? The, the percentage, well, I think um, overall, I think, um, you know, peaked at like 30% in like, 30 yeah. percent and now what where is it now well like i think you're lucky if you get like 12 to 13 percent like that's of pretty, all software engineers yeah it's pretty good yeah isn't that wow. awful it is terrible <laughs> people get really proud about that if that we hit if you hit that fact that, that that percentage um but yeah it's still it's not great so a long way to go yes we have a lot of work to do and what has been i mean how did you get involved in software engineering like what has been the progression of your career yeah, good question. So my background is um, I, my parents were in tech, and I needed uh, to pick a career. Or a, a, you know, what, what do we study in school? And I was I really like math, and I really it's like I just worked with computers all the time when I was growing up because my parents always had one, and I always got to tinker with them. And so it was just felt like a natural fit. I actually wanted to do math though, and um, so I went down the math path um, a bit. So I did computer science or like web development at SEC. And then I was like, I don't know if I like computers uh, after all. Uh, math is where it's at. I'm going to be a math Math teacher. is where it is at. Math is so cool. <laughs> right. And so I went down this math path. And then um, I went, I, then I was going to transfer out to Eastern. And I met the chair of the computer science department at the time, um, Dr. Hamel. And I met him at like the Davenport. They had an Eastern like show and tell event, something or other. And I was like, the math table was empty. No one was at the math table, but he was staffing the computer science table and he wandered over to me and he was this little dude. Um, and he had a cup a coffee with him and it's like seven o'clock at night and he was just like hanging out and I'm like, yeah, so do you know, like, this is the program I want, like mostly math, but like some computer science. So I'll like throw in the computer science, like, you know, because obviously, and he's like, yeah, that's nice. Here's the program you should do. It's like mostly computer science and has a math minor. And I was like, N no, I'm going to, I want to do it the other other way and he was very insistent and I was like this guy is just like <laughs> but he knew you <laughs> very apparently. pushy no I never met this guy before no but I but mean yeah, like, he totally like he, he got you yeah and so I transferred out to Eastern with math and I was like kept thinking of this guy is like that guy is really weird um and then I ended up not liking math out there at the time um and I was like well you know I'll, I don't know what else to do with my life I guess I'll just do computer science because what else is there to do like that was just my natural thing. So I went over to the computer science department and um, the Dr. Hamel was there and he, I'm like, oh, it's that guy again. Here you go, you were right. And he's like, hey, yeah, so here's the program you're gonna do. And and uh, and then he just immediately got me signed up and I was like, well, I guess this is what I'm doing. Is he still there? <laughs> no, he passed away. Oh, that's He um, was very inspiring and he's one of my favorite professors out there um, during my undergrad and he was there for most of my grad program too. So you have an undergrad in? Computer science. And a graduate degree in? in computer science. So both from dub Eastern. Double, yep. Wow. Yeah. You are a rare gem. Yeah, I was the girl. One of the, I think there was two of us in my undergrad. Wow. And then from there you went to work in various places in Spokane, right? Yeah, so in my grad program, because I didn't know what to, um, when I finished my undergrad, I wasn't quite ready to go out into the world. And they offered a program that you could teach out at um, like computer literacy and do your grad program. I'm like, that sounds great. And so in the meantime, I also got an internship. Um, so Eastern, uh, my friends at Eastern got me connected with Next IT for uh, my first internship. But no one really talked about how do you interview in software engineering. And the so, people skills that go with all of these math and tech and, skills. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, just go interview. And it's like, well, I've, I've had other jobs. It's like, yeah, you just kind of go and you just, you know, what are your weaknesses and strengths and stuff? And then I went out, interviewed, and they asked me a question. It's like, tell me about like a program or an application, you know, favorite thing you've coded, you know, in school. And I completely blanked. I've been in, you know, doing coding for, in school for years. <laughs> I have lots of things I could have talked about and I completely blanked on all of it as if I had never coded. I'm like, I don't know. Completely froze. And they're like, oh, <laughs> if she knows what she's talking, like she can be a dev, we'll put her in testing. And so I ended up in quality assurance, 
Which is what you're doing now. And I still do it. Wow. Yeah, it worked out really well because I had the, the, my boss out at Next AT at the time. Well, it was actually Next Century, so it was like a little spinoff. Um, but it got pulled back into Next AT at some point. But my boss at the time over QA was super inspiring. And he's like, QA is where it's at. And like, and you know, and you can still code because you write automation tests and all this stuff. And so you get to use all the same skills. But then you get to tell other people that they did it wrong. And which I always found really fun. Like another person that gets me before they really know me. <laughs> yeah, it's and so it was great. like, well, I was doing grading too at, at Eastern, so it was very similar. I'm like, oh, I you know, grade people's homework. I'm grading the code that the devs are doing. So in some way, it was very similar. But it was also like, you're protecting production. That's how I look at it now. Mm-hmm. Like, that's where the line of defense to make sure that nothing gets shipped out. Hopefully, you know, that's the goal. And so how long were you at Next IT, and then where did you go next? Yeah, so I was at Next IT. Um, for five years doing an internship and then they eventually um, hired me full time I uh, won grad program I did that and so I was there five years you know and then I went to um, STCU I was there at STCU for almost six years um, again doing QA so quality um, assurance is kind of your thing and then you went yeah. to risk lens yep and so then I went to risk lens um, and so that was a, a really cool opportunity to jump over to Risk Lens because it's a new startup. Um, it was really, you know, it's just exciting to be on a startup team. And, um, and it's, they had a cool opportunity. So when I was there, um, since it was a startup and very little, I had an opportunity to kind of create a new path. So I wanted to dabble in um, DevOps. And so I kind of created my own job after they hired me for QA. I'm like, you need help over here. I'm going to do... <laughs> so you like saw a hole, basically, yeah. that needed to be and filled. Like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> that is the great thing about um, entrepreneurial endeavors is that, yeah. that you can move quickly, you can see something that needs to be done and yeah. do it. Yeah. Is, so, and how long were you at Risk Lens? Uh, two, two years-ish and some change. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And then um, the opportunity came up to my, for my current job at NG Impact for QA Manager. So somewhere along my path, uh, I got interested in leadership, mm-hmm. and it's like I want to take that next level. And those jobs don't come up that often. Well, I'm sure, especially in technology, yeah. and to be able to be um, a female manager. And then, how many people do you manage now? So I started with eight, and um, two and a half years I've been doing this job, and now I have twenty-ish people that report up to me. So great! It's and what exciting. do you love most about? leading people what do you love most about that I love the people I love seeing them get excited about their job I love seeing them be successful I love seeing them grow Um, I like giving them opportunities and helping them through problems Um, it's hard being a human (laughs) and it's hard being an engineer you know having you know because it's just working in engineering is work with other engineers <laughs> and I love engineers but they're also like there's it's kind of it's really nice to have that extra challenge of leading but I'm wondering because everyone's engineers I mean does yeah. everyone kind of get each other in a way yeah. um because of that interest or that kind of using that part of your brain yeah more often yeah so um it's it's really interesting because like a lot of um QA people we think differently than like devs just because we approach problems um like how does this break Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of you know I'm kind of more skeptical which I appreciate not everyone appreciates that in um, what what can go wrong and how can you fix it before it happens yeah and we often Mm -hmm. bring the bearer of bad news you know but it's like how do you turn that into something positive like we caught this this is really bad but we need to fix it it didn't make it to the users this is good Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is actually a good thing right so it's like learning to communicate those things is a challenge and I love being able to um, work on that in myself and also help others kind of communicate that to their project teams, their stakeholders, and to, you know, other people that they're working with. And so what kind of um, formed your leadership style or where do you think some of that came from in you to be able to be where you are now? Yeah, um, I, I like the servant leadership style. Um, as I graduated of Leadership School Canon. Um, and, but even before that, I mean, I got interested in, in um, servant leadership. It's very, it's a very common um, form of, of recommended leadership style within Agile development, which is the software methodology that I've mostly worked within. And, and it, I just really love that style. It's like you're there to serve others. You're there to help others. That's the first 
thing. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that, then it, the rest kind of follows. Um, and it's just, it feels more natural. It feels more empowering to the people you're leading, at least from my view. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I just, I really like it. And so what we're talking about, what percentage of software engineers are women, Mm -hmm. um, or non, you know, LBGQ plus. And, um, so what about your team? Yeah, good question. (laughs) I, um, so let's see, I have four, gosh, I feel like I have, uh, like almost 20% then, or I have a pretty good percentage in your industry, in my industry, I feel like our percentage is pretty good on my team. So we have, I, yeah, cause I have, I have, um, one of my automation engineers is, um, she's a woman, she's leading the automation efforts. Um, I have two other automation engineers that are women. Um, I have another woman QA who leads her project team. Um, and then I, oh, I have another one. Um, she's, yep. I got all over. I try really hard to, you know, <laughs> take those things into consideration. And then I have, um, the moment I believe I have one, um, person on my team who is LGBTQ and out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. So you're really living, so we should talk a little about future ADA. Yeah. And so um, what is future ADA? Because that's kind of its purpose, right? So what is right. future ADA? Yeah, future ADA, so we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and it is kind of the um, evolution of community efforts and like on my side to create, um, build community, and support structures for originally for women um, in computer science and it's evolved into um, where we support diversity and inclusion and belonging equity within steam Mm -hmm. for so stem with art right inclusive Mm -hmm. Um, and it's to support and it's basically we're actually in the process of rebooting at the moment so the pandemic kind of gave us a hit everything Um, yeah but we're rebooting at the moment and part of that reboot is including rebooting our mission statement to be even more inclusive so every time we've rebooted um or like re up to our mission statement and like what do we do and who do we support it's it's evolved in a more progressive inclusive space so starting with just women and then it's you know okay women and non-binaries you know and okay well now it's like no, we literally want to support everybody. So it's more equity in yeah. the engineering space, in STEAM, all parts, which right. is science, technology, technology engineering, engin- art, and math. And math. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And so how did that um, come about? Like, how did Future Ada start? I got pissed off. That's really what, that's what it kind of came down to. Um, about? I was feeling pushed out of the industry. So I was in my career, I was senior level QA, and I was getting um, pressure from peers and just kind of the industry as a whole that I didn't belong. Mm. Um, clear, I mean, I, from an objective standpoint, I clearly belonged. I was you clearly doing belonged. doing my job. <laughs> I was getting, you know, promotions like to senior, like you don't do that if you or not good at your job, but that's the, the feelings I was getting. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, maybe I really don't fit here. Maybe maybe I should go find something else to do with my life and my career. Um, and in kind of a last-ditch effort, I got um, approval to go to a conference down in Portland for women in technology, or women in non-binary technology. And, and at this conference, I, so I'm still kind of feeling down and... I got a text message from um, an old boss of mine. She is amazing as a human. And she texted me. She was feeling very similar. And I, that, that was the moment. I'm like, nope. Feeling like she didn't belong in engineering. Yeah, like she's like, maybe I don't belong here anymore. And it's like, you can't, you can't leave. Like that is unacceptable. Like I need you. And like, we all need you. Like you're such a, you're so important to like this community. And it's like, you can't, and like, you have every right to be here. Like there's, yeah. So that pushed you over the edge into like, I'm going to do something. I'm going to take action. Yes. And so I'm at this conference and this conference was really convenient where they had like people who had been in industry longer got divided up into one half of the group and they were supposed to come up with a project to develop and present at the end of the conference. It was like three days long 
Um, and so I picked to, to start a nonprofit. <laughs> like, and you did. And I did. And, and how like, long ago was that? That was 2017. Wow. So yeah, so you've had to, with, with COVID and everything, you've had to reboot. And do you have, um, or are the plans to kind of restart programs that you had to stop? To, yeah. like, how, do you, how are you bringing more... Um, everyone basically being more more equity and inclusion into software engineering yeah so we're starting with um taking a hard look at who we are as an organization so that's like part of our first steps is to get all of that kind of organized and including changing our governance style to be more equitable and scalable and then but the first program we're rebooting is um privacy and security Mm. because that one we were able to convert into a virtual um, for the pandemic, and so it's pretty easy for us to kind of reboot that into here's we're offering an online webinar, and those were really neat because we could actually stretch beyond Spokane, yeah, which was really nice. It is the interesting thing, um, you know, the unintended consequences of us all kind of changing yeah. is that you get to reach a bigger audience, which is great because then future Ada is more inclusive. Um, mm-hmm. But hopefully, here in this region, as now things are kind of starting to come back and. Yeah. Hopefully, um, because that that human component is yes. so important for people to feel included or feel part of something. Yeah. And going forward, I'd like to be able to offer both because some people have a hard time with accessibility or like mobility and like various different things, and maybe they could participate better on virtual mm-hmm. platforms. But you're right, like the in person stuff is super important, and so we need to figure out um, how we do that because we're all very it's a volunteer organization. And there's, at the moment, we, we shrank a lot in the pandemic because right. the pandemic. Um, so how do we how do we bring in new um, fresh um, energy and get programs spun up again? And what does that look like? So we're still in the process of. So forming. you're expanding this tribe. Basically, you have this community um, of software engineers. So you're just kind of re-expanding. Yeah. Is yeah. that a word? I don't know. No, yeah, that's I a like word. That. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that the Spokane region is a good place to be in technology? I think so. Um, so before the pandemic, at least, um, I know that Spokane was actually really interesting from a tech view because we had so many like little pockets of awesome tech things. And they were all, it's not like Seattle where everything's established and gigantic. It's all this like, oh, do you, you see a gap or you want to get involved? Here's the person. Like literally you can go talk to that person and there, here's their group. Oh, we have a group over here. Oh, this group, you know, you know, maybe it's kind of, you know, dormant at the moment, but you want to take it over? You know, you have all these cool you mean community groups or do you mean like, like um, user startups? Groups. Okay. Yeah. User okay, groups. Yeah. Sorry. The user groups in town so that you can, anyone can get involved. Anyone can meet people and like get support. And you're right. There's tons of like startup opportunities that I think a lot of people don't recognize or know or hear or not enough people. We need more people to know. For Ignite, we run Ignite Match that works. Mm-hmm. And so we're trying to place um, managerial and technical positions here with um, startups. And it's amazing how needed it is. I mean, right. software development, software engineering, mechanical engineering, yes. all kinds of engineering. I mean, constantly there are so many opportunities. And then and then hopefully those people either that are here or want to live here um, will see those because it just seems like it's such a an opportunity to be connected yeah. through user groups or through feature ADA or yeah. um, just to be part of our, our startup community. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, there's so much opportunity here mm-hmm. in the tech space, um, especially in the coming out of the pandemic. I think there's even more opportunity to kind of reboot stuff and really form tech how we want it to be in entrepreneurial spaces. I think it's really exciting to, to be here Um I am originally from like the Seattle area, like my like early years of my childhood, and so I have a lot of family over there. And I briefly thought about moving back, but at the same time, it's like the tech industry over there is so big. It's like you'd be a tiny fish, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you wouldn't really have any ability to like make a splash or your likelihood of doing a splash. To kind of find your your place. It'd be harder, mm-hmm. and so it's like here we can form it. Like let's actually create stuff here. Like there's a lot, so much more like, opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And do you think this, I mean, why do you like to be here? Like, why do you like to live here, work here, play here in the Spokane region? Spokane's awesome. Um, so besides, you know, all the tech stuff and the opportunities there, my, my alma mater's here, Eastern Washington University. Um, and, you know, all the universities here are really exciting. You can connect with them all. I really love that. Um, Spokane is this big, small town. I also love walking down the street and running into like five people I know at any given time. <laughs> from different communities, from tech or from like, you know, the art community or from wherever. Um, 
it's it's really exciting. I went. Um, the other thing is you can go out, like within a two mile radius. You can go basically do any outdoor sport you want. Um, period. And so like the pandemic has really inspired me to get outside. I'm like I need to go do something. <laughs> yeah. some fresh air. You can work and, and play. Yeah, it's yeah. so convenient. And um, like just this week, I went rock climbing. And I ran into an old dev from Next IT. Like, just right there, right next to me. It's like, hey, I know you. I haven't seen you in for a while. It's, it's a pretty like, small cool community, though, right? Like, I mean, that you'll see other engineers from your career path or from Eastern yeah. that you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good description of a big little town. I yeah. Like that. I really, I love that about this town. It is great. Well, thank you for taking the time out of yes. your leading your team um, to come and talk with me about technology in our community. Mm-hmm. And I always appreciate seeing you. Yeah, thank you for having me again. I appreciate it.